Welcome to another episode of Road to Aesthetics. This one's going to be episode number three. In the last episode, I'll just take you through my recovery. And since then, a lot has happened. Basically, my shoulder has been getting a little better, but then now I've got another injury. I've got like some golfer's elbow, I think some, some injury, like overtraining, because I like to add in biceps. I'm doing calorie deficit, and that combination of overtraining leads to just my biceps, because obviously when you're doing biceps, your forearms get used. And so when your forearms get used a lot and they're not actually having adequate recovery time, yeah, that's what happens. So I was a bit stupid and I, yeah, I need to just give myself a bit more of a rest, especially in a calorie deficit. You know, your body probably can use more rest. You, if, if you are going as aggressive as I am, like 1500 cal, you know, but it is working because I'm currently gonna weigh myself tonight. I did a full day. I usually don't weigh myself at night, okay? But I did a full day, adhered to my diet, 1500 calories. Today is the 17th of November, 2023. Summer's basically around the corner at this point. And I'm still, you know, don't have abs, but I have lost an incredible amount of weight in just over 12 months, which is insane. And I didn't go like aggressive the whole time. I, I took the long road, but I learned a whole lot of lessons in terms of how to cook, how to eat properly. Haven't progressed yet. I haven't gotten to 100 kilo bench, 100 kilo bench. I haven't increased in strength, unfortunately. I've sort of just plateaued because I'm trying to get lean and then build upon that. But anyways, in this video, tomorrow I've got a bit of an unavoidable glycogen replenish day, let's say. Cheat day, right? I'm going to a buffet, all you can eat. It is literally gonna be heaven. So it's unavoidable. In this video, I'm gonna be taking you through my push workout. I'm gonna be giving you some tips you can do if you know you've got an unavoidable cheat day or if you go off your diet in general. There's so many different things you could do and you could even do absolutely nothing and just go right back on track. You know, you don't have to prepare for it. You don't have to do all these things. But in this video, I'm gonna be discussing and just take you through my day and giving you some tips and discussing things you may want to implement you may not want to, that's entirely up to you. Whatever works for you, whatever you feel like works best at the end of the day, because we're all individual. Honestly, if I had the choice, I'm pretty motivated at the moment. There was a point where I was dieting and I was looking forward to that cheat day. Right now, I'm looking forward to like getting abs. You know, I'm looking forward to finally progressing because I know once I get to that point, I can slowly start incorporating foods and you know eat around 2000 calories a day and still look cut and lean because I'm not gonna get fat off 2000 or even two and a half thousand calories. You know, that's my maintenance. You know, I can slowly build back up to that and maybe even put on a little bit extra size with all that extra glycogen in terms of calories, right? I'm gonna be showing you my weight, you know, what it is tonight and you know we'll see how much i lose overnight because i'm going so aggressive usually at about 0.2 maybe 0 0.4 0 0.4 is a lot usually i'd lose about 0.2 to 0.4 overnight sometimes especially i didn't do a complete two hours of cardio today on the bike only because i was sorting all this stuff out with the phone setting it all up you know it takes a bit of time but now it's all good and downloaded all the apps and organized the way i like it but apart from that look i'll be real i hope one one day we could look back at this video essentially that's what this video is i'm not expecting to get a lot of views at the moment it's still a relatively young young channel and i've got big hopes and dreams i hope i can fulfill them and work bloody hard i've been working hard so far and i'm intend to just keep it that way and just work hard to achieve my aspirations my goals and i really hope you can i could share this with you and you know at least inspire motivate you guys to do the same this is a, a video series to look back on eventually and yeah because once i'm gonna get in shape i'm gonna goddamn guarantee you i'm staying in shape i'll stop rambling on and i'll continue on i'm gonna go take you to my bathroom and we're gonna go weigh ourselves do a physique well Actually, I'll do a physique check. I'm gonna do a physique check first and then weigh myself second. All right, I'll catch you in the next clip. That was horrible, I'll catch you in the next clip. It's been a couple months since the last episode, so I've been just really dieting hard and uh, recently I got into actually counting my calories before I was having two meals a day, estimating my calories, you know, not actually like counting it and actually weighing my food. Now I'm actually starting to weigh my food because I'm really getting serious into really trying to lose that last bit of weight um, just to ensure I'm just 100% in a calorie deficit. But anyways, well, let's see. I definitely see some extra definition going on, which is always 
bonus, but uh, let's see. Definitely do a physique check uh, after tomorrow too, so we can compare. Cause I'm, I'm feeling hungry already, so I'm feeling pretty empty. Oh, I've been working on this pose. Hold on, ready? So back, leg forward, shoulder back. Oh, I feel like I nailed that. Maybe I didn't. <laughs> um, yeah, oh, back. No, back hasn't gotten smaller, I don't think. <sighs> so, yeah, but I feel like I'm like definitely getting some muscle condition. And my stomach has definitely gotten flatter, and my abs are starting to sort of come out too. So. Now I've got to learn how to tense them too, because I've never really had physical abs. So, yeah, we'll see the pump tomorrow, because it's going to be a push day tomorrow. And I've taken a couple of days off to really recover from my golfer's elbow. So, it's going to be push day tomorrow, which is my favorite day. So, we'll see how we feel, carved up and everything. Everything's going to be good tomorrow. Rested, filled back up. My guess is going to be 73. Maybe if I'm lucky, 72.9. But maybe I get to 72, because the last time I owned myself, I was 73. Maybe 72.8 tomorrow morning. You want to see the legs? I'm like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, as you can see, hopefully. Hopefully. But my legs, I'm actually starting to get that teardrop happening. Like, be honest with you guys. Interestingly enough, legs for me is a bit genetically, like, I don't know if you can see that. I, <laughs> I don't know if you can see that, but like my legs are leaning out, but I don't train them. I, no, no, no. I, I do train them, but like not often, not as much as I train my biceps, believe it or not. Recently, I've been tra overtraining my biceps, and so look how big my arms are. Genetics kind of play a big part because I feel like you get a hundred people to do push pull legs, and you give them the exact same program, training protocol, you give them same meal, diet plan, everything. Some people's biceps are gonna be bigger and some people's legs are gonna be bigger and everyone's gonna be, you know, cut and have more definition in different muscles. A lot of people use genetics as an excuse for certain things. But as you get into lifting and as you get into understanding the human body and understanding fat and understanding muscle insertions, you understand what actually is genetics and what actually is just a lack of hard work. Remember that. The fact that I'll train my legs once a week, sometimes once every two weeks because I'll skip them because I've developed them to a point, right? And I'll, I'll get away with like training legs. But then again, I mean, my cardio is involving my legs, especially on the bike now, I'm doing bike work. So I could be keeping it from atrophy, atrophying, get, just getting smaller. So apart from that, yeah. Um, Cause then I could easily, I could easily turn around and be like, no, the reason why my legs are big is because I don't train them and they actually get rest and recover properly, which there may be some merit to that too. I can't say a hundred percent that that's the reason why, you know, they're actually, you know, built the way they are. Well, hopefully you've got all that, but yeah, most of the time it's all due to genetics and stuff like that. So anyways, um, enough of that. Let us go away ourselves. Alrighty. <laughs> I'm back. All right, time for the moment of truth. We'll see if there's a difference. We'll see if I'm actually lighter now by the end of the day. See if I see if you actually lose weight by the end of the day. Um, updated 16 hours ago. So that was me this morning. I was 73 this morning. So will I actually be lighter or will I be lighter in the morning? Let's find out. 73.5. Nah, it's honestly not that bad, guys. Honestly, uh, 73.5, that's just all the water weight that's accumulated that I will piss out tomorrow morning. And I'll probably be, you know what, 72.9 if I'm lucky. We'll see what happens tomorrow night. Your meal timing has a lot to do with how much you weigh by the end of the night because you just got to think, how long has your body had time to process the food into excrement? So that is that. We're going to weigh ourselves tomorrow morning and then we'll weigh ourselves if I get a chance to come back home after eating catch you back in my room and then i'm gonna tell you the plan or well, the diet plan for tomorrow which is really simple straightforward i'm back i'm changed into my comfy pjs and 
I'm about to go to bed because uh, it's going to get late. But first things first, I, I used this week as motivation to stay on my diet on those times where I felt a little hungry and felt like, well, maybe I have an extra meal, which honestly wouldn't have hurt. You know, I would have thought that, you know, instead of having like a cheat day, my thought process was like, oh, maybe instead of 1500, I'll go to 2000 today and have a nice little cheeky meal, which probably may have been fine, but maybe I wouldn't have been as much as in a deficit. So I wouldn't have lost as much weight. So trying to keep in that 1500 range was my goal this week, which I managed to achieve. So I did that and I used tomorrow's motivation and said, hey, I've got tomorrow's going to be a cheat day. So why not just stick to it? Because it's only one, it's only like three days left, only two days left, only one day, just stick to it. And so I did. And now I get to enjoy it because I feel less guilty because in a way I feel like I, I earned it, you know, that kind of earned it mindset. But basically tomorrow, all, all I'm really going to do is literally down a protein shake with water mind you just to minimize that calories just a little bit more because it's like an extra 200 calories i could save myself i'm only going to be having that one meal that cheat meal so like all you can eat so i can eat a lot i'm someone that can eat a lot in one city so i'm going to easily be able to down there with the dessert and everything probably going to be eating around like 3,000 calories give or take in one meal i mean come on you've got lasagna you've got fried food you've got the cakes the sugars it's a whole bunch of carbs and fats that's going to be there and you know what maybe some protein sources there too but i'll try and triple scoop which is usually 60 grams the bulk nutrients the ones that i use taste the best but usually each scoops roughly 30 grams so 90 grams hopefully my digestive system agrees with that because usually if i have too much protein in one sitting a lot of flatulence occurs so three scoops that's 360 calories for about 70 grams of protein so i know like at least for breakfast i'll have i'll i'll, I'll be like 70 grams of protein so i know i've got like a, a solid amount and then you know all my other protein will come i'll make sure to have some like meat there but it'll probably be like you know fattier cuts lamb if they've got lamb or just steak you know with some chips and sauce and pasta lasagna just think about you know all that just generic but uh, unless they got like some specialty food but you know or prawn crackers have you ever had them so i'll show you that all tomorrow a big big massive thing is that this one day isn't going to be setting me back much it probably does set me back maybe a little bit but if that it may even help because you got to think about it i'm really depleting my body I'm, I'm pushing my cardio right i'm doing an hour two hours on that little bike machine I'm trying pretty much mostly every day on top of that i'm eating 1500 calories which is you know considered really really low so i am losing a whole bunch of weight and i'm depleting my body then tomorrow i'm gonna have a whole bunch of carb up because if my muscles can hold a certain amount of carbs and I don't think my muscles have shrunk in actual mass. They've just probably depleted their sponge. They're just, they're just not, they need to be filled up with like water. So the best way you could do that is give it your carbs. So that's what I'm going to be doing. Um, yeah, that, that cheat day is going to give me an influx of obviously fat. So it's going to help regulate my hormones and my hormones don't go low, obviously, all the, you know, fat. But then the carbs, the carbs are going to be the great part because I'm going to have, you know, so many grams of carbs that my muscles are literally going to absorb it. And then hopefully a few hours later, my body will die, be able to digest it. And then I'll be able to do a nice late night push session. And the only reason I'm doing late night is because I'm filming it and I'm trying not to be in anyone's way, but obviously, you know, I want to be able to film content. And I feel like, look, a Saturday night, I did it once and it was so peaceful. And I felt like I could just really take advantage of the fact no one's there. I can, you know, move the camera, get some good angles, really be creative with the whole thing. Apart from that, you may have noticed, yeah, I recently got a bed. Surprisingly, it actually, uh, having a bed makes the bed feel bigger. Like, it makes the mattress feel bigger. So... Yeah, that's been good, but it makes my room feel complete. Like, I feel like this is like a, I don't know, maybe I just feel like it's a missing puzzle piece. I know I said I didn't need a bed and I stand, still stand by that. I don't need a bed. Um, I don't need one. I was still happy to be sleeping on the floor. I didn't feel like there was a need, but it's a gas lift. So it gives me extra storage, which is a plus. Um, <laughs> but it just looks nice. It's so weird to be sleeping so high. It feels so high. I swear to God. Look. Apart from that, guys, that is it. And just let you know that, you know, at the end of the day, this is this is how you deal with it. You have days where it's unavoidable. So fair enough. The biggest thing is to just enjoy it, limit it to one day, and you get back on it tomorrow. Worst case scenario, you have two days. All right, well, two days is, yeah, it's not the best, but 
don't let it drag on to three or four days that's when you start seeing like fat gain uh one day is usually when you replenish your glycogen stores and you look a bit fluffy you have a bit of water weight so you don't look as defined but it's not actual fat mass it's just a little extra water weight which is why one day doesn't really set you back even two days because they say that a refeed day is usually if you do it properly in a controlled way, not just go all out, usually up your calories by you know a certain percentage. They say it's two days you give yourself a refeed day for the actual me metabolic benefits when your body you know adapts to the dieting. Maybe not two day cheat days, but then you know on the second day you could potentially just maybe not go back to 1500 if you're doing 1500 you could go maybe 2000 you know to two still do your cardio if you want and then back and then the third day you know you could bring it down or you can just go back down straight to 1500 cows if you really want it either way you're going to be getting results because in the whole grand scheme of things you have to look at the bigger picture at the end of the week did you staying on track of your diet plan and your energy output and your energy intake overall in that week were you burning more energy than you consumed yeah a couple of days you went over but in the whole grand scheme of things two days out of seven days it means you burnt a lot more than you did so you're overall still on track you know if you look at it like that it helps you realize oh shit well i really didn't do that much damage but if you look on the daily in the short term because a lot of us are impatient just want to be shredded already i know but it's a journey it's a mental battle and it's a mental journey we all have to go through if that's what you want so but anyways yeah i'll keep it at that and i'll catch you guys tomorrow good night sweet dreams love you all till tomorrow Bye. it is the following day good morning to all of you well i just literally woke up or i guess started with cleaning my room organizational things i thought i'd get a few things out of the way the first thing for this video was that quick physique check i don't think much is going to be changed overnight but we shall see and then just a quick weigh-in just a quick note though, I did end up going downstairs, making my coffee first as like out of habit. I started, I filmed it and everything on my phone. And then I realized, oh shit, I got to weigh myself. So I'm not like a hundred percent empty, but I only took like a sip. So hopefully that doesn't matter too much. But if you just keep that in the back of your mind with when, you know, seeing the results, because the biggest thing is when you do weigh yourself and you want to see progress, especially with a scale, you have to take those numbers with a grain of salt. Yeah. Okay. Like. It may not have gone down as much as you hoped, but there's always tomorrow. Do you know what I mean? Like if you're on your diet, then just use tomorrow as a motivation. Be like, oh, the number didn't go down today. Okay, well, obviously use your knowledge of understanding, hopefully, of nutrition and be like, well, the numbers stay the same. Okay, and when you look at yourself in the mirror, do you see a difference? Like be honest with yourself. And if you think that you're seeing a lean difference, then your body could be obviously developing that muscle tissue. You could be depleted more. So that weight from like the water weight and stuff, you'll be you're depleting yourself. But then maybe because you're resting, your muscles start repairing. And you know, there's a whole bunch of things, especially when you eat not so low. If that makes sense. So I'd say weigh yourself at least once a day. If you do that any more than that, then the numbers will change. The longer you go without weighing yourself and you stick to the plan, the more motivated you'll be because the scale will have time to, your body will have time to lose the weight and then the scale will reflect that. But too short of a time weighing yourself, you're not going to see the scale go down as much, if that makes sense. So if you weigh yourself every hour, the scale is not going to change much, you know, because each interval is literally going to be small little increments of going up and down and seeing your body fluctuate but then you, know, you weigh yourself once a week and you stick to the plan overall you're going to see a lot more difference and it won't be on your head because you know you're kind of trusting that process and then eventually you will see the difference in a week but then if you weigh yourself daily you can still see the results but you won't see as big of a difference every day as opposed to if you did every week if that makes sense but if you weigh yourself every day but you look at it weekly you see are you going down or are you going up you know if you really wanted to go every two weeks but that's a bit too long my personal opinion if i had to guess i'm probably sitting at around 15 percent body fat i reckon maybe the scale says 20 percent but like i've been on sitting around 20 percent for like this whole year so i don't really think that's accurate but let's go away myself holy shit i still lost weight overnight it's crazy what happens when you actually sleep and how your body can just lose weight overnight but i was surprised I woke up at 72. It always happens. I wake up at my lightest and I end up having a cheat day, which is, yeah, well, it's annoying. <laughs> Overall, I can show you that it's part of life and it's unavoidable sometimes. So the best thing is to not complain about it, not be like so sad about it, but I'm just going to enjoy it today. Right? I'm going to go up because overall what happens is 
I'll gain, like I'll, I'll, I'll lose, and then eventually I have this G day, I'll gain weight, but not as in fat probably, not a lot, but then, you know, and then I weigh myself, and then it's like 72, 73, that's, but that's like inflated, I'll call it, yeah, like 72, 73, inflated, and I'll probably go up to like 73, maybe I might even go 74, we'll see, but I'm 72.7, I, I took a guess, and I'm like, I'm lucky if I hit 72.7, but I did my cardio last night, I didn't do two hours, sure, whether that would have made a difference or not, but I did my cardio, and then, you know, I had 1500 cals, you know, I measured everything like precisely, and when you actually measure things, obviously I'm making more progress, I feel like, and now I'm actually tracking my weight, waking up every single day, not just like look at myself every day, but that is absolutely insane, I've never seen that number on the scale before, and I am on track to get in down i feel like but i really feel like i need to get down to at least under 69 kilos to be lean so then i can try and be around like 75 lean with like extra muscle mass on me because once the more i'm leaning out the more i realize i don't have as much muscle as i think i did <laughs> because it was all disguised in fat you know what i mean so that's where the rebuilding process is going to commence and this is where i'm showing you guys i'm trying to take you along the journey so you know if you guys are interested you click on this video you can just see the journey see the process what it takes as a natural someone who's not taken any you know enhancements anything that i take is all like normal stuff that everyone takes it's like creatine and ashwagandha tongat ali you know things that you could just buy off the counter like you try to maximize my day and, and and everything so but most of those other stuff maybe creatine's probably making the biggest difference maintaining some of my overall strength being on an aggressive cut but tongat ali you know all those supplements i haven't been religiously taking them maybe that's why but I, I really like i feel a difference i guess in some days like maybe like you feel like more energized when you take some of that but overall like in terms of like physique and strength i haven't really noticed much of a difference but maybe that those sort of supplements are maximized on a bit of a at least maintenance if not like a bit of a surplus when you're actually growing and a bit of like a, a strength sort of phase so we'll see you know if there's a difference there but i am happy because it still says fat rate i'm still says i'm sitting around 21 percent. can you believe that like what am i just losing overall muscle and keeping my fat on me like which is obviously not the case because i mean look at that well, you could say i got abs just like when i have the really did yeah realistically i'm trying to yeah hopefully at least be in shape by this summer because i know i've been taking it easy and this and that but uh, yeah anyways what i'm still yet to do last thing is before i go is that i'm gonna down my coffee right i had a big mug not my giant tall mug because i'm saving room for a protein shake because i gotta head off in a couple of hours and i want to like get shit done so i got like two hours to have my breakfast get myself ready do all that sort of stuff so all i'm gonna do really is down that coffee and then make myself a protein shake with water triple scoop that and just force it down and that way i'm probably going to be full give my body time to digest it and i'm not going to be hungry i can go along my day and then when i get to the all you can eat place hopefully i'll still be full and then you know hopefully i'll be able to fill up much easier and i won't eat as much but yeah i still want to enjoy it to a point i'm still i'm going to be there i'm going to socialize it's going to be good we've still got a lovely push workout to do today that is going to be fun and that is what i'm looking forward to because obviously i got that issue with my elbow today is an exception since it's saturday and i'm trying to keep myself accountable to film something to have content out for you guys uh, and then the rest of the week depending on how like, today's session goes i might just be taking a rest I'll be resting, which is going to suck, but I'm just going to be doing cardio. Like when I say rest, cardio, and or maybe stretching if I feel like it. Just, you know, maybe have to stretch my forearms a little bit too. Stuff like that. God knows I probably need to stretch. Apart from that, let's get started, shall we? Let's get started with the day. a.m. and lunch is going to be around 12 to 2 or is it finish at 2? It's around 12. So about four hours. I think that breakfast is going to sustain me and hopefully I don't get too hungry by the time lunch hits or else. 
kind of defeats the purpose. Then maybe next time I could play around with my meal timing. Ideally, if you can, try and have like that, you know, try and fill up with either just a bunch of just water, just drink a bunch of water, which I might try and do, or coffee, or even like a protein shake, and just fill up your stomach. The closer you fill up to your stomach before the actual like cheat meal, then the better off you'll be. But you don't want to fill yourself up too much when you know you've actually, like, for example, if you know you're going to lazy mode, you know that portion size is going to be big. So you don't want to be too full, but you want to be full enough to know that you can finish that portion size. Or, I mean, even better, if you know the portion sizes are bigger, for example, then you can fill up, have as much of that portion size as you can. If you even can't finish that portion size, even better, you can take some home or give it to someone else, or you take some home and that large meal, you know, could be like, I don't know, 1,500, 2,000 calories, right? Let's just say if you know what Lazy Mo's is, they're renowned for having big portion sizes. So you say you have half of that, say the whole meal's like 2,000 calories and just one little, one huge meal with all the chips and that. You split that in half, that's 1,000 calories, which is more bearable. And if you eat half then, and then half the day after, and then you, you know, estimate and just guess and be like, all right, I'm just gonna say that's about 1,000 calories. I'll have that with maybe just a protein shake the day after, and you keep your calories, you bring them low the next day after, then you basically had a cheat day, but you all pretty much stayed on track, you know, because if you had half of that the first day, you didn't really go over your calories much. So really, on those days, if you can not go over your calories or find ways not to, I mean, today, it's all you can eat, so I can eat a lot. So I probably might go over my calories a little bit today. All right, big deal. But we'll go over my maintenance calories, I should say, not my goal calories, not my cutting calories, because they're a bit different. But yeah, so really, that's what you should do if you can. And you know, if you, if you know it's like a cheat day and it's like you go into a restaurant just for one meal, then either, usually at that point, you could order something that's still within your calorie budget, I should say, whatever you leave next, or you can allocate your calories and eat accordingly for that meal. So you can essentially have a cheat day, but not really have a cheat day. Like it's just, it feels like you're off your diet, but it's not because you've allocated accordingly. You could fast if you wanted to, and you know, have that one meal a day. Having one meal a day on one day, and you know that you could order whatever you want, and then you at least have like, at least have a protein shake. If you're going to a restaurant, and you want to order like a big meal, then the safest bet you could do is have that one meal a day and invest in protein, have a double or triple scoop protein shake because then at least you know you've got a decent adequate amount of protein in your system to help repair. You've hit your protein goal, you know, roughly or at least close to your protein goal if it's about like, you know, because three scoops, you could even quadruple scoop it and have two lean protein shakes day and night, you know, and two, two, if three is about 70 grams, then I could, you know, four could be close to about 100 grams of protein in four scoops. So you, you split that up day and night and then you have your, you know, your one meal a day, even though it's technically not one meal, but you have your one actual meal a day, it's a restaurant meal, and you have your, your protein shakes and you mix it with water, especially recommend bulk nutrients. I just had that with water and I cannot stress enough. I know all these, inf I'm not sponsored or anything. I know all these influencers say like, oh, you know, this is the best tasting protein, blah, blah, blah. But look, I'm not even sponsored by them. I'd love to be sponsored by them because I legit feel like they've somehow mastered the taste. Like all these other proteins taste like shit when you mix it in with water. But I mean, obviously it, it tastes even better when you mix it with milk, but it's the lowest amount of calories you can find in a whey protein and it tastes good. And it, it's actually pretty decent value. The more you order, you know, the better value you get kind of thing. That's like their little niche. I've only tried, they sell a bunch of supplements, bulk supplements. I've been yet to try many of the other ones, but their WPIs are the best. They're Aussie too, so for those Aussies out there, you know. And they have some great, amazing flavors. And each flavor, I mean, a lot of flavors taste pretty good. Vanilla maple pretty is, is it's just like that. It's better than just plain vanilla vanilla. Like it just has that nice maple sweetness to it. I like it. Once you invest and find a good WPI that tastes great with water, then obviously, if you find one that tastes great with water, then obviously it's gonna taste great with milk. So, you know, find one, try this out at least, just buy one, and it's not gonna break your bank, I'm pretty sure. And then give it, try it once. And then you'll realize how actually good this tastes compared to all the other ones out there on the market. And I'm not trying to sell you it, I'm just literally trying to help you out and be like, this actually tastes really good. So you find that and literally have that one meal a day, you're laughing, you know, because then you'll feel like you had a cheat day, right? Especially if you go to the restaurant and you order something and you order dessert as well, maybe you want to order a main and dessert as like a one big large meal. Let's just, 
you know, even though it's two meals, whatever, right? Yeah, you wanna go to that, you wanna order whatever you wanna order at the restaurant because you wanna be able to enjoy like a nice meal. Fine, order whatever you wanna order because it's either gonna be protein, fats, carbs, whatever. You wanna have a steak, you wanna have lasagna, you wanna have pasta, it's gonna be some sort of protein in there, but at least you get your protein through your drinks anyway. You have your lasagna, that's your carb source. And then you have, you know, your dessert, which is more carbs and fats in there, right? So you're pretty much covered for the day and you feel like you've had a bit of a cheat day and, and you've eaten, you know, and you'll probably eat a, a solid amount. So the last thing you want to do is have another meal that day because it's going to fuck with you. And then you just have a protein shake with water just because, you know, you want extra protein for dinner before you go to bed. And then, you know, the day after you realize, well, you may or may not have gone over your calories, but you've minimized how much over your calories you've gone. So essentially what I'm doing, except I'm only triple scooped up. I only triple scooped it once and I have my meal, my large one all you can eat meal today. And, and, and that's it. Maybe I might have some, maybe like some honey, like just maybe some honey for pre-workout later tonight. Cause obviously I don't have pre-workout. It'd be fucking stupid to take pre-workout at like eight o'clock at night. So, that's what I'm gonna be doing. Anyways, uh, I think I've said enough. I'm giving you some lovely information. Do with that what you will. And now, what else? Now I gotta actually have a shower, get myself ready and uh, actually look the part because it's actually semi-formal. So I'm gonna find a nice shirt, pants. You know, we're gonna dress ourselves up. We're gonna look a little fancy. So let's see how we go. Let me get this all set up, sure. Banana sponge with a bunch of toppings and this little custard thing. Oh, I felt sick, sick to my stomach, sick to the point where I was going to throw up. But I did it. I did it for you guys to show you that even if you go to the utmost extremes and eat all that, all those calories, that you can still get back on it. And I wanted to show you guys, no matter how much you eat, it's not the end of the world. Alrighty, I'm back. Please do not mind the mess, whatever mess you see. It's been quite a hectic day, but I am back. I'm standing underneath the light. This is a physique check. I am full. You saw everything I ate. First things first, I just weighed myself as well, and I even just went to the toilet and excreted some stuff too. So on top of that, I'm sitting at about 75.5. That is an increase of 2.8 kilos worth of food, drink, water weight you know my muscles probably getting inflated already it's been probably about it's currently eight o'clock today my last meal would have been probably around like 2 30. since then i haven't really eaten much i got to the point where i was physically sick i've never gotten to that point before absolutely crazy and insane i've never gotten to that point where i was just like literally about to yak it you know absolutely crazy and insane so i'm about to get ready to go to the gym getting everything ready so i thought i'd quickly check in and just let you know 
that I put on about 2.8 kilos, but it's not fat, right? And this is the physique check as well, right? So I don't know if you can see my legs, hopefully, but yeah, um, like still my abs are like still, you know, like it's bloated, but if I really tense them, like I haven't put on body fat yet. I've been suffering, I don't know if I, I probably already said, like I've got a bit of like golfer's elbow, I think it's what it's called. So, so essentially the plan is I'm going to be doing cardio all next week and give myself a rest. So that's going to be a thing. And while I do that, today's just going to be my last sesh. Uh, for a while, I'm going to film it for you guys, have some content ready, probably until next Saturday night. So we'll see what happens then. Apart from that, I, just a quick physique check. So then hopefully I can, uh, we can compare it if you can. You know, with the editing, I can compare it and show you the difference. All right. I mean, it, looks, should, it should look roughly the same, um, but yeah, anyways, um, I'm going to go get ready to the gym and I will catch you guys at the gym. Alright, and we finally made it to the gym. Just doing some nice warm-ups. Got to warm up the shoulders because the shoulders are actually quite important. But essentially, got to start off doing some bench press. Probably do around like 80 kilos. You'll see how that feels. You'll see how strong I feel. And uh, just slowly just warm up to about 80 kilos really. So, see how we go. I'm going to show you guys how good this pump's going to be. I'm on the road to getting lean, and then once I'm going to get lean, I'm going to stay lean, obviously. I don't know if I've said that yet enough, <laughs> but... <laughs> I haven't actually done bench in a while, so we'll see how that goes. But obviously, my goal isn't strength. My goal is to increase my strength during my bulk. Obviously, being during a car day, it's been extremely hard to make any sort of progression in terms of strength and getting stronger. The main goal is to maintain my muscle mass and get bloody lean. <laughs> And then I know once that phase is over, I can really focus on getting strong, at least get to 100 kilo bench. This is gonna be, that is a goal for my next bolt. 100% I know I'm gonna get there. Get another warm up set real quick. 40 kilos. I'm still feeling pretty light, which is good, which is good. I'm feeling pretty strong. So yeah, nice little cheeky warm up with 10 on each side. I don't claim to be the most strongest person on bench, but, Move up to about 60. 60 should still be roughly lightweight. See how that feels. Oh, my elbow's playing up a little bit, which is a bit annoying, so definitely gonna be giving it a bit of a rest for a week. But I just met someone at the gym, a mate, and he wants to train on Wednesday, so we're gonna be doing legs on Wednesday, which is gonna be all right. So I'm not gonna be using my arms too much, gonna be resting that a little bit. But at the end of the day, you don't need to do anything. You have a cheat day, you could literally just get back on it and enjoy it but you know at the same time if you feel like you want to do something and you feel like just doing nothing getting back on it is not enough then by all means you know reduce your calories calculate it all and the days after as long as you get back on it I think that is just the biggest thing but anyways I'm gonna go see how 60 kilos feels all right <laughs> Where are you going? <laughs> oh, that wasn't too bad actually, that wasn't too bad, that wasn't too bad. I think I've got 80 for a few, we'll see how 80 feels. 80's feeling pretty good, maybe I could even get 90 kilos. So, see how that goes. Just gonna do a cheeky rest. We'll see how things go, shall we? Well, after a bit of a cheeky rest, let's see how this feels, eh? Oh. Oh shit. Right. Fuck. One more. One. <laughs> oh, did you see that last rep? Oh, that is the best. I even paused, I intentionally paused that last one 
I paused that last one because I knew I could do it. <laughs> I, I knew it was in my mind. I could fucking do it, and I did. I pause a little bit because, you know, you actually exert it more because you're using less momentum. When you bounce off your chest, there's a bit of momentum there, so you're not 100% using the muscle. So I was able to pause it and really give it extra, generate extra force within the muscles, obviously, because if you try bent, paused, as opposed to, you know, touch and go, paused is really good because it actually helps, I feel like, generate true strength. It's not generating power like when you touch and go it's like you're generating a lot more force but usually when you bounce it off your chest usually when you bounce it off your chest it's probably about from like there to there but when you rest on your chest your force is literally starting from where the bar is to there so it's like that extra range of motion in the whole grand scheme of things is it going to really matter probably not if you keep consistent and overall it's not gonna make the huge difference if you're training for Mr. Olympia or a powerlifting competition. Potentially. <laughs> so, potentially. That's all right, I'll probably do a few more sets of this actually, 80 kilos, I'm really starting to feel my chest engage, which is good. Because with bench press, if you're actually struggling to feel your like chest working on bench press, instead of repping that out, if you do roughly around about heavy enough weight for about five reps and then those last reps were a struggle like that honestly that's where i feel like my pecs work a lot more during bench press and that's where i get the best pump doing bench press definitely give that a shot on your next push day see how it goes it's been a couple minutes and uh, i'm gonna be doing another another cheeky set 80 kilos i think that's a good solid weight for now we don't need headphones. This time we're going David Goggins. All right. <laughs> Holy shit. All right, that was good. I love it. That, that last rep, when you really fight it and you get it, it is the best feeling in the fucking world. Oh yeah, did I let you guys know? Today's Saturday night. I'm filming on a Saturday night because, as you can tell, gym's empty. Because who the fuck's going to be <laughs> filming? Who's going to be working out on a Saturday night? Other than yours truly. <laughs> but yeah, perks of going to... Small local, small local gym. That is not obviously a Dermot gym. Because I'm sure if I go to Dermot gym, it's probably packed right now. <laughs> Let's be real. But this gym, beautiful. I can train a Saturday night, it's a bit empty. Nothing, no better feeling. I, I, could, I, I could do whatever I want. I could come here and I can use this machine and move around. <laughs> it's pretty good. It's pretty good. That's pretty fucking good. So uh, yeah, now we've got to rest. Fatigue's starting to kick in. Well, that's what happens when you feel Saturday nights, I guess. One minute I was saying, hey, Saturday nights are great, gym's empty. Next minute now, it's like pre-workout starting to wear off. I guess it's a good thing, because I'm gonna have a good night's sleep tonight. It'd be fucking stupid to take pre-workout like eight o'clock at night. It'd be fucking stupid to take pre-workout like eight o'clock at night. Anyways, uh, this is gonna be my third set. I believe I counted properly. Usually I like to take like longer rest sets between you know bench press, squats, or deadlifts when I'm doing compound movements uh, because obviously they're taxing and require a lot of energy. Um, but then when I'm really doing like isolation movements, sometimes I know sometimes science or like studies show that drop sets aren't the most effective at you know maybe building muscle or this and that. But I love doing drop sets. I love working hard, you know, and I love like pushing the muscle to its absolute like failure point, you know. When I get to failure at a particular weight, I like to drop it down and just get that extra, you know, few reps in. It just feels good and it, I love training hard and maybe mentally it gives me, you know, I just like doing drop sets, especially when it comes to the dumbbell section. So I will see how many reps I can do. Hopefully I'm gonna aim for like five, six. Hopefully that'll be pretty good. 
um, and then I'm already feeling my chest pretty pumped as well. So yeah. Two. Three. One more. That last rep, Jesus Christ, oh, that feels so good though. It's literally a battle when you're getting that up, you know. I could have easily quit it and be like, nah, you know, hey, come help me, you know, stop the recording. One, yeah, I've got the recording there, so I've got some sort of accountability, sure. <laughs> but the other is like, no music too, I'm feeling like David Goggins at the moment. I'm probably putting headphones in too, but. I don't know, I'm not feeling headphones today. For whatever reason, maybe I'm focusing on the video, but that's how your reps should be, I'm telling you. I mean, on this cut, whether I put on muscle or not, but I'm definitely, <laughs> that's insane. Oh. Finally, I've been waiting to take this out. You see the chest pop, a little bit? Oh yeah, not too bad. Look at this. See these things? They're called weights. <laughs> I'm gonna be putting them away because that's what you should be doing after you finish your bench press. Remember that. It's not hard. So you grab this plate. <laughs> yeah, you put it over there. And it makes a nice cool little jingle sound too. So if you ever see me working out, and I still have weights on the bar, chances are, I'm not finished. Probably going to the toilet. Ooh. Okay. Now, I'm gonna move this bench, we're gonna do some nice, uh, sexy dumbbell presses. Now, when it comes to your dumbbell presses, Actually, I find that, for me, I put it up one notch. That's flat for me, right? For the, whatever reason, these particular benches, I don't know. But when it's on its flattest thing, that for me, that's a bit of a uh, decline press. So this is like flat for me. I know it's weird, but for me, I feel like that actually hits the, the, the middle portion where flat, you know, is supposed to hit. But I already did flat, so. Um, usually I got about number seven on here. I don't know what degrees that is, but no, wait, sorry. That's about no, that's number five. Oh, you know, I won't go too much of an aggressive incline, actually. I'm not going to go too much aggressive. Since I'm a bit fatigued, probably going to go suss out. Usually I do about 35s, sometimes 37s on a good day, and on an extremely good day, I'm able to pump out 40s for a couple. But right now, I'm feeling about 32s seem all right. We'll see how they feel. Do a couple cheeky incline presses. The thing you should always do when you're on your dumbbell presses, you look yourself in the mirror and you tell yourself, who the fuck do you want to be? All right? Tell yourself that. Look at yourself dead straight in the mirror. Usually you have music blasting in your ear, some sort of motivational shit, right? Let that sink in. Look at yourself in the mirror. Who cares? I mean, I've got no one around me, sure. Who the fuck cares if there's other people training around you, bigger dudes? Who the fuck absolutely cares about other people right now? You, you go to the gym for you, isolate yourself. It's good practice to really just be in your own little zone, all right? Who the fuck cares? Everyone else is in their own world too. You're just sharing a beloved space together. And what you do is you have music on, motivational shit going on, some rap, whatever it is you listen to. And you zone in, think about your problems, think about life. Think about how you're going to man up and be the man you want to be and how you're going to craft your destiny, your life, what you're doing right now. All that shit should be in your head at this point. When you have the dumbbells here and either when the music hits, when the bass drop hits, if your hard style's your thing, or when you feel like the time is right, you grab these bad boys and you show them who the fuck you are. Tch. Tch. 
sure. Number this is. Yeah. Fuck. No. Fuck. Oh, that's Nothing is better is when you get a night, when you get strong enough to hit like 30 plus kilos, whatever that is in pounds. I usually think usually around 30 kilos is when you get to like big boy weights. You know, that's when you've like intermediate, you've been training for a while. It's not too hard to get to. Anywhere around like 30s to 40s. And then when you're able to drop that weight, like you complete a set and you drop the weight. You just feel like, you feel strong. Because like the louder the weight hits, like once I fucking get to like 60 kilo and you drop that, I swear you just feel like such a sick cunt. <laughs> you feel like just such a strong, you feel strong, you feel powerful. And um, you know, especially with music blasting in your ears. I don't know, it's a really good feeling. And obviously if you're gonna be dropping your weights, be mindful, but if you're going to failure, now, you know, this may be a controversial topic, but hear me out, one sec. If you're going to absolute failure, you're training to get to failure. And you drop your weights, it's fine. As long as you're mindful of people around you. I've got to grab. So as long as you're mindful of the people around you, then that's fine. Um, I don't see that an issue being the weights, you know. To a degree, it should be the gym's responsibility to ensure the flooring is fine, to ensure the dumbbells fine to a point. I'm obviously you're not going to be stupid about it, but even dumbbells themselves should be crafted to a point not to be so delicate, like proper dumbbells. So, yeah, um, especially once you get to a certain weight, I think you know it's important. It's it's part of the training. It's part of training hard. Because trying to control the weight, especially when you go heavy and you're able to do heavy weight, can be actually quite dangerous because you're having to control the weight when you're already like fatigued and you just need to get the weight off. You're already fatigued, you're training to absolute failure or thereabouts, and you're gonna have to try and control the weight to try and get on your like to get on, you know, your knees and arms, and then you might actually, you know, have a shoulder injury because you know you're trying to control that or anything like that. You know, as long as you're mindful of people around you, there shouldn't be too much of an issue. Plus, I mean, you know the sound it makes when you can hear it through your loud fucking music too. Oh, I feel like it's a really cool feeling, so. But anyways, obviously, I'm gonna rest up for a little bit, not too long though. I'm gonna smash out another set. Right, set two, let's go at it. Had a bit of a rest. Ugh. Quick tip, obviously when you are like, getting the dumbbells on your leg, if you put them cl as close as you can to your knee, it gives you the best leverage for when you kick it up. You know, this is how I sort of do it. Like, pretty much here, you know. Zone in, think about your life. Everyone's got fucking problems, everyone's got shit they're going through, think about that. Think about how you can be a better human being overall, right? This is why we come to better ourselves. And then, when the time's right, just kick it up as high as you can. You sort of just move it to your chest. After all, it becomes muscle memory. Right. Nice and controlled. As slow as you can without injuring yourself, obviously. Feel your pecs engage. Oh, fuck. One more.
<laughs> I don't know if you can tell with the angle. Usually a black top, it hides a lot of shadows, but if you can get into the light, like that chest. I feel like my left side's overall just much bigger. I'm just in balance somehow. But, uh, pretty pumped up though, I do have to say. Oh. Oh, I hope I didn't fog up the lens. Jesus, all right, that's good. That's how your reps should be most of the time. Pretty much a failure. Whew, look at that. That is a pumped up bicep. I don't know if you saw my biceps before, but uh, that is what, like, uh, fuck, that's what a cheat day does. What? Are <laughs> you focusing on that? Uh, that? That's a pumped up bicep. Naturally, of course. All right. Beautiful. All right, now. I feel like I got a bit of a pump at the moment. My muscles getting there. Next up, we're gonna do some chest flies on the cable machines, all right? Ugh. Sorry. <laughs> you could always sometimes judge the pump by how difficult it is to take off your compression top. Um, oh, this is a good. Hey, not bad, actually. I know we can get a bit more pumped. What I like to do, I like to tuck my... I don't know many of you do this, but I like to tuck in my singlets. It makes me feel bigger, it makes the singlets tighter, so it makes you look bigger too. You know what I mean? So. I don't know if you see that, but yeah, it's my back there. Biceps. Oh yeah, man, I love this pose. I love like... I love that pose. And then, oh, see how that goes. <laughs> but, yeah, a few cool little cheeky poses. Mad pump from doing them. So. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it kind of just same. happens, yeah. No, you I, I, I want it like symmetrical, that's it. Oh, that's never gonna happen, but you could try. Rest up, we'll do set two. What I also like to do sometimes in between, if I go to a point where the gym's empty enough, if I go during peak periods, I'll stick to like one exercise and one station because obviously, but sometimes I like to come during the day, early mornings when the gym's a lot more free so I can like alternate, I'll move like do a set of flies and then I'll like kind of, is it a super set? But like from flies right afterwards, I like to do lat raises, lateral raises, lat raises. And then from there, ooh, I love doing these. Just, I like spam them so much. That's what people say to do. And then some other things you can also do, which I like to do as well, is hold it and really control. Because if you want to build like absolute proper strength, you want to avoid shoulder injuries. The best thing you could do is strengthen those bad boys up, right? Now, you could just do this for days because you're kind of using momentum too. You want to limit the momentum. So slowly control the weight up and then control the weight down, right? But then the next best thing is hold it there too, right? Build a bit of maybe endurance if you want, but like 
build some strength, strengthen those tendons. Apparently, isolation movements help strengthen the tendon a lot more as opposed to the muscles. So that's always good, right? You want to avoid shoulder injuries, shoulder pain, all right? Control on the way down, see that? Now I see people, you know, doing thing and they're just like spanning it out and stuff. And there's probably some merit to it. There's probably, you know, probably still somehow worked. You are, you know, moving the muscle, you are contracting the muscle to some degree and with some, some degree of force. And there is some degree of resistance there, but we want to maximize each rep, optimize each rep. Don't be afraid to go light. This is what, only eight kilos. But you can make it feel like 20. Okay. Yeah, you can't do anymore. Oh, look at that pump. Oh. <laughs> I'm gonna do a drop set. <sighs> Fuck. <sighs> One thing I didn't get to show you last time, actually with the shoulders, is that recently I had a bit of a I think it's more of a some sort of injury near my back my, my left trap i think was giving me some sort of i may have pinched it i did something to it and so i didn't want to let that stop me from training so i was like it sort of hurt when i was doing that like put my arm out and something i didn't really get it checked out properly i should have but it sort of has gone away and so i was like trying to heal it by just doing light work and get some blood flow into it instead of just letting it rest but just gonna try and rest that. I feel like that's an overtraining thing. But as a result, I sort of stayed away from um, shoulder presses because more incline movement was uh, like, I felt it a lot more. So I was like, okay, well, I still want to develop my shoulders. So I just did front raises a little bit, much lighter weight, but pumped them up, get the blood flow going and, you know, help develop it. Cause I, at that point I wasn't sure if it was my actual shoulders, but then after a while thinking about it, feeling it, now they're down as my trap. So yeah, recently, because I don't do shoulder presses, I've been doing a bit of like side raises or like that. Ugh. And I do some like front as well. So I try to get both, you know, sides activated a little bit. Sometimes I like to stand this side. Away. The way I hold the dumbbell when I do a side raise, hold it like this, like you can hold it like this, but I don't know, I find putting my thumb over here, I don't know, it's like, it's a weird grip, but like it helps me lift the butt, I mean, I'm done. Now I gotta do my other side, but. Sometimes I even like up. I want to stand up. I think it's easier when I'm standing up to actually do front raises a lot more. Other side. Two. Come on. Ugh. 
since I'm not going to train much, I'll get a quick bicep pump. Then I usually I just get just a tricep pull down. Push downs, that's about it, really. I'm Beyond from the future here. So I thought I'd quickly just go through and explain to you what's happened the next few days after and how I managed to just get back on track and how long did it really take me to get back on track to my weight loss journey. So this took place on, it started on the 17th, right? In the morning, I weighed in at 73 kilograms. And then at night, I weighed in at 73.5. So I was on my diet, I was eating my 1500 calorie diet, but you know, obviously during the day, you're not gonna lose weight. You know, it's just a bunch of all water, things that were in my stomach that haven't yet processed, you know, all that sort of stuff, you know, a bit of water retention. And then Saturday comes rolling around. And then in the morning, I actually woke up a little lighter. I woke up at 72.7. And then after the cheat day, I woke up at 75.5. Pretty much gained like three kilos or whatever, but that's just all food in my system that just was yet to process a whole bunch of like water weight, my muscles, my glycogen, all just, you know, filling up. And I'm editing this video right now. It's just crazy, like how, how much more fuller, how bigger I just looked like overall, especially with a pump and downlining. Cause that's what accentuates the physique more is just pure downlining. Cause it just creates the, the best shadows really. So all that combination just made me look extremely big, extremely jacked, right? I mean, maybe not lean, like I probably didn't look like cut, but you know, my arms were looking like once I got a bicep bump, I was like, whoa, like in one of the angles of doing a hammer curl. And I was like, whoa, like my arms don't always look that big, but yeah. But anyways, I digress. So then that was the 18th, then the 19th on Sunday. Now I was going through my MyFitnessPal diary, everything I ate. The day after that, I think I ate about a thousand calories because usually the day after I don't eat a lot i'm usually full and i want to get back to that depleted state of not a lot of muscle glycogen and that's why i put quotation marks because it's like all right i want to get back and put my body in a state of like fat loss it's like a, i want to gain that fat loss momentum because every time for me i find that when i'm back on my diet it's a bit of a momentum that happens and every time i you know fall off the wagon i lose momentum and i feel like i have to regain that back and I hope that maybe some of you can relate when you're trying to diet and you fall off and it's like you feel like you lost momentum but if you just get back on it's like a snowball you know it, it gets bigger and bigger as it goes down the hill then it breaks every time you fall off and then it has to start small again until it gets bigger and bigger and bigger right so then Monday rolls around so then from Sunday 75.9 I went down to 74.8 now it's important to know I wasn't doing cardio every single day I look back I was you know doing just cardio on the bike for you know one to two hours um, and I was burning roughly around about 500 kilos but the thing that was constant was me eating around about 1500 calories pretty much the whole entire week except for Friday which I went out to a Johnny Miller cafe and I got like this steak sandwich and I tried to just guess, you know, I looked at the ingredients and I tried to just estimate, you know, roughly what they put in there, what would have calories, all that sort of thing. So I calculated that maybe I would have had around 2000 calories on that Friday, right? Which would have been the 24th. So on the 20th, 74.8 kilograms. And then the day after that, I dropped down to 73.7. And then the day after that, 73.2. And then the day after that, 72.5. And then this is on Friday, 72.4. And then a week later, right, the following Saturday, I got down to 72.2. So really, it took me about four days to get back to the original weight that I started and get under that. So 73.2 is what I ended up being on Wednesday, four days later of just getting back on track, doing my cardio whenever I pretty much could on those spare times that I had some time to do my cardio and back on 1500 calories, boom, four days later, you know, I got back to pretty much my starting point. And then after that Wednesday, Thursday rolled around 72.5, Friday 72.4. And then a week later, seven whole days, 
being roughly around in a calorie deficit, I made sure that I knew that I was eating and I was in that calorie deficit by tracking my foods, even though that Friday was like a bit off, but I still managed to do a decent job of tracking. And when I do guess, I try to overestimate to make sure that under that calorie limit. So about a week later, 72.2 kilograms, which goes to show that the biggest thing is to just get back on it. Like you can have the most excessive cheat day. You could have about, I'm gonna say it was probably about 8,000, 9,000, thousand calories and that could have been like four thousand five thousand calories over my maintenance whatever that was that day and then you have to take into account the thermogenic food effect you know how, how many calories it took to actually digest that food and produce the enzymes and all that stuff so i got back onto my excessive calorie deficit right i was doing 1500 calories I, i'm one to kind of do that the biggest thing that you might be worried about is that oh i don't want to lose my muscle mass from my personal experience i don't believe i've lost my muscle mass yeah strength losses may have occurred as a result of just being in that deficit but i don't believe that's extremely correlated to actual muscle mass because looking at myself i can objectively say that a lot of it is just me being depleted as long as you're getting your sleep obviously because that could be a big factor and you could potentially lose muscle mass if you're consistently not getting enough sleep that's what apparently some of the experts have been saying but essentially i've just been dipping like look some days looking more carved up more bigger and other days just looking a little bit more flatter but i guess a bit more cut so it's it's not the end of the world if you go off track but if you can ideally limit it to one day if you're gonna have a cheat day and if you can't help it those two days in a row okay fine but usually by that second day you'll be feeling guilty if you're wanting to lose weight and you've fallen off your diet you've fallen off you've lost momentum but use that as motivation to get back on your diet because you've only really got two choices you either don't go back on it and you start eating whatever the fuck you want and potentially just gaining weight and not really looking as ripped and as great as what you could potentially be looking like or you could actually just get back on it and start you know losing that weight so then you're back onto your goals and then you actually feel happy about yourself you start feeling confident again and you build up that momentum like it's really two choices i'd much rather moderately every now and then have a cheat day and have an enjoyment day and have something to look forward to because then you can use that as like motivation because right now it's currently the 16th of december and i've got a whole bunch of cheat days lined up that i really can't help but i'm going to try and minimize that as much as possible and i'm going to enjoy them and then just get back on it every other day that I really can help. So that's a little talk that I wanted to show you guys and just let you know that that's exactly what happened. In saying all that, I've actually got a video coming up, not the next video, but it'll probably be the video after that. It's gonna be a vlog of me taking you through my whole Christmas weekend and pretty much showing you everything that I eat and giving you a bit more physique updates and showing you guys how cheat days can affect the gains and if you know how to use it wisely and you actually gain knowledge of how the human body works nutrition wise how it processes food and how it affects your muscles then you can actually plan accordingly lift accordingly maximize those gains and then obviously after a cheat day boom go to the gym and lift and you'll be feeling more energized this one's not focused more on just limiting it to one day this video is going to be more like okay you've got a few days lined up usually i only give myself one or two days and it's like okay get back on it i've got three days and if I go ham on three days, I could really be taking like 25, 30 steps backwards. It's not that it's going to destroy my progress completely, but it's really going to push me backwards that I've been making so much progress forwards that I don't want to be taking more steps backwards than I am forwards. So it's like, okay, how can I still enjoy those days, but make minimal detriment to my physique and my you know whole weight loss journey and getting shredded? How can I still maintain all that? Well, that's what I'm just going to show you what I'm going to do and tell you guys that it's not the end of the world if you just have a, if you have one day, if you have two days, even if you have three days, it's not the end of the world. The biggest thing is no matter how many steps you take, take backwards you take more steps forwards and you pick yourself back up and you keep going forward because if you don't you're just going to make more steps backwards and the more steps backwards you make the more mental resistance it's going to take for you to have to be like fuck all right fine i'll go back on it because surely there's a point where you're just like holy shit you realize that you stop looking at yourself in the mirror you realize you stop tracking your weight you realize you stop doing these things and you're like well why did i stop you know what's going on and that's the point where you have to tell yourself well it's either now or could potentially be never you know what i mean so yeah that all being said i'll end the video here and i will see you guys in the next one where i make a special announcement let you guys know 
you know, what's been going on, show you guys a physique update because it's, it's actually been a few months. I'm actually talking to you guys in the future and I'm bringing you guys some stuff that's been in the past. So until I can kind of get up to date, I've really been trying to smash out these videos and, you know, at the same time, I know they're long, so I'm trying to make them as digestible as possible and as entertaining as possible and, you know, going to put timestamps. So if you want to see certain bits and pieces, you can just skip around, you know, I understand they're long. If you can sit through the whole thing, I will love you more than you would ever know. But if you don't and your attention span is small, then that's fine. My attention span is the same, so don't stress. I understand. But these videos are pretty much just videos that I feel that are important to put out there. And I know they're long and you know they may not rack up millions of views, maybe one day. But right now, I think they're just important enough to just show everyone and even myself to look back on that you know, the journey and where I'm not allowing myself to get to that place ever again, that if I'm going to bulk or if I want to put on weight, I can do it properly and I can actually get my weight under my control and not have my weight control me, if that makes sense. So, you know, this is just me getting into shape and then being able to control being into shape and control how much fat gain I have. And when I do feel like it's going under control, when it's getting out of control, then getting back on it and just, you know, sharing you guys and, you know, gaining credibility in terms of like physique gains. Cause yeah, right now, right now, can you believe that yeah, I was taught these numbers that I was talking about feel so far into me because I was, it feels so long ago, even though it was like last month, but you know, this morning I woke up at about, <laughs> well, this morning I woke up at about 68.4 kilograms. I'm 5'11", give or take. And yeah, I mean, you know, some have been getting a lot, of, a lot of comments saying like, oh, it's, you know, you're too light and stuff like that. And then my waist, I had to buy a new pair of jeans because my waist has gone down to like a 30, which I've never been, which is insane. So I had to buy a new pair of belt and like jeans. So that, that that's crazy. And I got a 30 up. I, I potentially, they're still a little loose. I'd still have to wear a belt. Like I could potentially fit into 28, which is mind boggling. But anyways, so yeah, there's a lot more progress that has been made since then. I'm talking to you from future. So like I'm making these videos and I'm having like mini updates from the future and, you know, trying to make things up to date. But for now, I guess we'll just keep it like, hey, me from the future and then here's the video of the vlog that i make so then one day you guys can just look back and just see where i came from because you know if my physique i look i do see a lot of potential i've got a lot of hopes and dreams as we all do and i see that you know if one day you know this channel gains thousands of subscribers and if one day you know people question my natural status this and that i mean i, I claim natural if that's not clear but like you know if people claim my natural if people question it then at least you guys can just see like progress and hopefully just like more of a trend trying to be a bit more transparent with you guys just be real you know i see that what makes a successful you know content creator influencer if you want to use that word like you know it's about being down to earth and respectable humble likable and transparent to a degree you know that's my aim at the end of the day you know not to not to fake anything you know and just be real with you guys because really what have i got to lose by trying to be someone that i'm not you know what i mean so yeah anyways that's that and i think i'll end the video there i've said everything i need to say yeah that, that's a sneak peek of how lean my biceps are so that's pretty crazy but yeah overall my arms are probably the most leanest part compared to everywhere else i'm still uh, in the process of developing abs but uh yeah they're they're, they're not bad so in the future my elbow situation is uh improving so that is always a plus but still a bit of pain so i got a ultrasound done and I'm currently just waiting for the results so we'll see if that's anything but right now i'm just i'm just i'm back at training but like a little bit more consistent and uh try not to make things too worse but i think if i train properly don't do biceps yet but start off really light strengthen them up again i should be back to 100 percent in no time so yeah apart from that thank you guys for watching i really appreciate you and uh, i'll see you in the next episode guys but yeah remember just stay productive stay consistent and you know remember to always chase your goals and dreams because no one else is going to do that for you